But the president already back on the trail, again, in contrast with Joe Biden, who's not on the trail. And the president talked about the violence we're seeing in Democrat-led cities yesterday. We want to play that and get you to react to it. Listen. That's what's happening in Portland, and that's what's happening all over where you have Democrat-run cities. Just take a look. People walk out and they get accosted, they get abused, they get spit on. It's a disgrace. Today's Democrat Party is filled with hate. Just look at Joe Biden's supporters on the street screaming and shouting at bystanders with unhinged manic rage. They're not protesters. Those are anarchists. They're agitators. They're rioters. They're looters. Congressman, are Democrats, on for the mob, unfortunately playing into the president's hands, showing indeed this is MAGA versus the mob at this point? Well, look, people are watching all across the country when they see this this mob rule. And again, you have one thing of, of peaceful protesting, which is something that's part of our, our great democracy. But then this this violence in the streets, it's unhinged. Uh, it's, it's being tolerated uh, by the Democrat leadership right now. Joe Biden has been looking the other way. And people, uh, people don't want this for our country. Uh, they don't want to have this idea that if you disagree with what liberals say, then you literally are canceled and they want to yell at you and they want to throw things at you and, and confront you physically uh, and try to burn down houses. There's no place for that in America. Congressman, you are no stranger to politically motivated violence, unfortunately. And what we see now are protesters harassing, they're hurling expletives at people, particularly people who left the RNC the other night after Donald Trump's speech. Uh, Rand Paul, we saw, and his wife were mobbed and harassed. Quite ironic, given that Rand Paul has such a strong record himself on advocating for criminal justice reform. So what do you make of this? Is it escalating? Is it just more highlighted on the front lines? Uh, what, do we, what do we have to look forward to uh, coming next out of, out of these mobs? Well, people want and people deserve uh, to have safety and security in their communities and in their homes. And, uh, you know, look, if, if Joe Biden's going to look the other way, President Trump's made it very clear he's going to protect your safety and security. It's one of his top priorities. Uh, and it's a duty of the commander in chief. And he's offered to help those cities that have let their towns get get overrun by mobs. Uh, some have basically said they don't want the help. They want they'd rather their city get torn down for some political message. Uh, and, and people don't want that, uh, whether you're, you're Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, you you don't you want to be able to peacefully protest. Uh, you don't want uh, you don't want your, your community burned down because somebody disagrees with your philosophy. Congressman, one of the great eye opening realizations for me over the last several months is how fragile security is, how fragile, in fact, um, civilization, civilized society can be. It can be taken away at a moment's notice. As Jedediah mentioned, you're no stranger to political violence. You're no stranger to that that facade of security being ripped away at a moment's notice. I was walking with my wife the other night and I said, once you're a victim of something like this, you never get to look at the world the same. You see what happened the other night outside the RNC. I'm just curious from your own personal experience and perspective, can you ever look at a situation like that the same after what happened to you? Well, look, I've worked very hard to, to not have that define me, who I am, or my, my outlook on life. I mean, I, I love life. I, I, I love people, and, and I, I, I saw what's best in people through that hor horrific time. So, uh, you know, you, obviously you've got to be aware of your surroundings, and that's, that's surely something that I think people are even more of nowadays. But, but at the same time, you, you've got to ultimately go about your life. And even in COVID, you know, you, COVID's out there, but people, most people want to go about their lives. You take your precautions. You know, you should be safe. Again, know your situation wherever you are. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I want to go about my life again uh, as normally as possible. And I think most people do as well. Where we're seeing this happen, Representative, are Democrat-run cities, Democrat mayors, many of them resisting the president, many of them resisting calls for the National Guard or federal assistance. When the federal go government does show up or the National Guard shows up, the violence seems to go away. Joe Biden has had multiple opportunities to step up and denounce this type of mob atmosphere. He finally did a little bit. Uh, but... I, What's your take on why he won't? Uh, and, 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 and does he think there's a political disadvantage or advantage to more or less staying silent about this violence? Yeah, it, it's really bizarre and concerning. Uh, Joe Biden has made, I think it's a calculated decision to look the other way. 
Uh, and, and he's bought in, by the way, to the Bernie Sanders left wing agenda uh, on all issues. And so I guess on law enforcement, it's no different. Look, this is going to be a big issue in this campaign. But Joe Biden, when he didn't think everybody was watching, was very clear. He said he wants to redirect money away from police. That is no different than defunding police. Anybody that tries to tell you differently, uh, did, did they not even take a basic economics mm -hmm. course? And so the idea of redirecting or taking money away from police, especially at a time like today, I think it's concerning to most Americans. Again, this transcends political philosophy. Uh, so Joe Biden's bought into it. Uh, Donald Trump's made it very clear he's going to keep our community safe. He's going to stand with our good men and women in law enforcement. If there's a dirty cop, you go root him out. Uh, but by the way, go look at the cities where you've had uh, the bulk of the dirty cops. Uh, you've got to address that in your own community. But then you have to back those law enforcement officers who are risking their lives. They risk their lives uh, to protect us. They have an equal right to be able to go home and see their families as anyone else does. Congressman, quickly, uh, President Trump is heading to Louisiana today to tour storm damage. Your thoughts on his arrival? Uh, Congressman, I don't know if you heard that, but uh, Jed mentioned that the president's headed down there to Louisiana to monitor storm damage. Give us an update down there, if you would, sir. Yeah, I, um, I'm actually going to be with the president in a few hours out in Lake Charles. I flew over that area yesterday and uh, just devastating impact in so many uh, parts of southwest Louisiana. We went to Cameron Parish, where uh, the eye of Hurricane Laura touched ground. I was with Clay Higgins, the congressman from the area, and our attorney general, Jeff Landry. Uh, and then we went to Lake Charles, and you could just see so much devastation. And, uh, you know, you, you, there are a lot of people without electricity, uh, without water. The water systems uh, in Lake Charles were decimated as well. And so they don't even have uh, running water right now. They're working on a number of different fronts. We're going to be providing help. The president's coming down to offer any assistance he can, and our governor's going to be there as well. So, you know, we're going to be working uh, right on the ground with the local officials to get them whatever they need. Uh, to to get their community back up and running, but keep uh, the people of Southwest Louisiana in your prayers and anyone else who was touched by the devastation of, of Hurricane Laura. For sure, Representative Steve Scalise, thank you very much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you.